Joining me now from Edmonton is United Conservative Party leader Jason Kenney. Uh, Mr. Kenney, why are you holding this rally? Why are you so opposed to the idea of a carbon tax? The NDP government in Alberta introduced a carbon tax uh, uh, three years ago that two-thirds of Albertans consistently oppose because they understand that it's all economic pain and no environmental gain. That punishing people for heating their homes in a cold winter or filling up their gas tanks to drive to work is not an environmental policy. It's just an effort by big government politicians to get more control over ordinary people's lives. Uh, and that's why we're delighted to see this growing national coalition against the NDP Liberal carbon tax uh, from Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan. And we believe New Brunswick after this uh, election is resolved, and we believe here in Alberta next spring. Uh, Mr. Kenny, where do you think this is going to go, though? Because at the end of the day, there's legal opinion saying the federal government has the right to impose this kind of a tax across the country, just like your government did with the GST. And there, it wasn't my government, to be clear. Uh, we cut the GST by from 7 to 5%. Uh, the, uh, we also have legal opinions indicating that this would be an unconstitutional intrusion into provincial jurisdiction. Uh, so my party, the United Conservatives, are running on a platform explicitly to repeal the job-killing NDP carbon tax. Uh, and if the federal Liberals then try to impose their tax arrogantly on us without the consent of Albertans, uh, we'll see them in court. We'll be joining the legal challenges of the governments of Ontario and Saskatchewan Saskatchewan, I believe Manitoba as well. Uh, listen, uh, provinces have a right to levy prop taxes for provincial purposes. The federal government saying this is effectively a provincial tax. They have no business doing this. But more importantly, uh, the cost of living is already too high. Gas prices are up. People in Alberta are paying effectively 120% a ta carbon tax on natural gas just to heat their homes. And Mr. Trudeau's agenda is ultimately to increase this massively. His own de the environment department admits they want to go to at least $200 a ton from the current federal Federal twenty dollars a ton, a, uh, a tenfold increase, uh, because they know that the proponents of carbon taxes will admit that you cannot achieve Paris climate targets through reducing emissions on a carbon tax until it's in the range of two to three hundred dollars a ton. But Mr. Kenny, I just want to stop you for a second. Curbing. Because there, there is actually a report that came out very recently by Canadians for Clean Prosperity. It's run by one of Stephen Harper's former policy directors that says if the carbon tax is done right, most households would see a significant rebate. They'd be getting more in a rebate that they're paying out. And if you believe that, Mercedes, I've got some swamp land in Florida for you. The idea that you could uh, tax pe people and they're going to be better off by then sending checks from the tax. This is ridiculous. It's been completely rebutted by Canada's leading tax policy expert, uh, uh, Jack uh, Mintz. Uh, it would cost an additional uh, net 400. Uh, it would cost more for every family with an income of over $40,000. So it's just another effort to tr uh, transfer uh, revenue within Canada. How about instead we try to get the over all tax burden down, the cost of living down, instead of politicians constantly trying to take more control over how people live their lives. Mr. Kenny, I'd like to switch gears a little bit, but to another issue that is certainly a hot button out in Alberta. That's the Trans Mountain Pipeline. The government announced another 22 weeks of consultation that's court ordered uh, with Indigenous communities. Uh, you're saying you would have rather see them challenge this in court, but a lot of legal experts say it would have taken more than 22 weeks to get this to the Supreme Court. Why take that approach? To be clear, I'm saying they should do both things at the same time. Uh, there's no reason. They, they, they don't have to do these things consecutively. They can do them at the same time. They could go to the Supreme Court on an appeal, and they should do so. Uh, on this, Premier Notley and I agree. Um, we need clarity, uh, not just for this, but for future projects, not just for pipelines, but other major infrastructure projects. The, let's be honest, Mercedes, the courts keep changing the, the goalposts on what is the federal government's duty to consult First Nations. Uh, we need clarity on that for the future. And I believe there's a very good chance the Supreme Court would overturn this. The decision of the federal court against Trans Mountain was made on very narrow technical grounds. They basically said the feds uh, fulfilled their consultation duty on three of four phases. But in one of those phases, they didn't talk enough. They only listened. I mean, is that really uh, the, the grounds on which we're going to jeopardize a, a project that could represent tens of billions of dollars of value for the Canadian economy? And by 
the way, Mercedes, what about the vast majority of First Nations along the pipeline route who support it, who have been partners in Trans Mountain for six decades, has been there for six decades? Why don't they get a voice share? Why is all of the legal power only in the hands of a small minority of typically foreign-funded uh, First Nations, in this case, that aren't even on the pipeline route? Although there are First Nations on the pipeline route who oppose it too, but we don't have much time left, so I want to ask you, do you think at this point that Trans Mountain is ever going to be built? I don't know, but I, I certainly hope so. We desperately need it. This country's got the third largest oil reserves in the world. We need to get it to global markets. And if we don't, we're abandoning global energy markets to the world's worst regimes like Saudi Arabia and Venezuela, uh, Iran and Qatar, and Putin's Russia. The world needs more Canadian energy, uh, and, and, and we need it to pay for our future uh, debts and health care and public services. Do you also need to do something, Mr. Kenny, though, to address climate change? Uh, but of course, but the pipeline doesn't c create emissions. This is a complete misnomer. The, wor the, the world has a growing global demand for oil and gas, uh, according to the International Energy Agency, through at least the year 2045. The question is whether Canada will be part of supplying that demand or whether we will allow it to be supplied by the OPEC dictatorships. I don't think that's good for the And I guess whether or not Alberta in the future standards. might do something about uh, carbon or climate change. That's all the time we have, unfortunately, so I have to wrap it up. But thank you for joining us. Thanks, Mercedes.